on a previous episode of Shadow Realm. If fire is your ultimate goal, then how are you any different from a Rakshas? But doesn't Agni mean fire? Isn't that the whole point? The next morning when I awoke, my senses were still heightened from the hermit's magic. Everything around me had the clarity of an HD movie. A butterfly flipped by my nose, its orange wing pattern standing out in sharp contrast to the green leaves behind it. A furry Shivana's hand shot into frame to shoo the butterfly away. I'm sorry if I bothered you. Don't worry. It beats my alarm clock. Have you seen Chimpu and Pandu? They've gone to search for breakfast with the other Hivaners. Then I'll go and help too. I followed a line of trees to the clearing where I'd met Rishiji. But on the way, a sound of something in the forest grabbed my attention. What is that? Oh my god! What the? I turned my head to see the ugliest creature imaginable. She was bright in color with a female face with bulging eyes and warts. Her front legs were clubbed and heavy, and her rear was so long and scaly. It swished around behind her like a giant tail. All over her body were boils that oozed neon green pus. She opened her mouth, exposing a green warted tongue that forked like a snake. Yet, there was something else very familiar about her. Oh, think you can get me, Goopeater? Athena? How the h- Whoever Balchorni was, she knew me better than I realized. What do we have here? Baby Vonners? Please, Balchorni. Our tribes have just settled here after a long winter. There are so few of us left now because of you. Monkeys everywhere, and not one will offer an old visitor a morsel. What does that say about your hospitality? Please leave my children alone. Ooh, but they taste so good. Hey, don't even think about it. (laughs) And who are you? Protector of the monkeys? Do you think silly threats from a little boy can stop Balchorni? No, my baby! He's all alone in that tree! Ah, a breakfast fit for a queen. I had to act quickly. I reached for the bronze arrow and pulled it back in my bow. My mind was clear, my target certain. One, two, three. (gasps) Right through the heart. What have you done? did it. She's dead. Hey, hey, what's the matter with everyone? Isn't this what you wanted? Your arrow hit that tree, setting it on fire. Now it's spreading to the others. My baby, 
Someone help! You'll burn alive! I'll save him! It's the Astra. He doesn't realize its power. There's a clear passage through some of the trees, not touched by the flames. But, but... Come on, we need to get out of here now! After running for what seemed like miles, we arrived at an open ground of rocks and shrubbery. The Vonners were all exhausted. I wasn't at all tired. But my heart sank like a heavy stone at the sight of the Vonner village on fire. And then I heard a familiar voice. Impetuousness does not belie self-defense. But that's not fair! I came across the Rakshasi. It was the perfect opportunity to use the Astra. I was trying to save a baby. Which you almost killed, along with many others. By fighting Balchorni's fire with your own, you have destroyed the homes of some of the fellow beings that you had sworn to protect. I... I didn't slow down to, to think of my fellow beings. Now... They're going to have to move to another part of the forest once again. Are you really Arya the Protector? I don't know. At that moment, I didn't feel like there was any difference between me and the Rakshasi. We had both made life incredibly difficult for the Vonners. Thank you for listening to Shadow Realm. If you enjoyed today's episode, share it with someone who'd love to journey through the Aria Chronicles. Visit theariachronicles.com for more information. Be sure to rate and review us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Coming up on Shadow Realm. Bandu, what happened? The lower half of his body is badly burned. This is all my fault. He needs deep medicine. Stay tuned for more. <laughs>